Premiere has got a nice multi-camera feature, which has had for ages. Again, they've changed that a bit in the Creative Cloud version. In CS6 and earlier versions, what I would do is to make up a timeline, put a couple of clips onto it. Imagine these are my different angles. I'd line them up. These clips actually weren't filmed with the idea of doing a multi-camera, so a bit of a hard thing to line them up, but normally I'd have lot matching sound and I'd shuffle them backwards and forwards till all the sound lined up. And then what I would do is to take that sequence and shove it into another sequence. So let's make up another new sequence. Put the sequence inside of it, right click and say multi-camera enable and then you'd be able to edit your multi-camera sequence. It's quicker to do it these days. You can still do it that way, but it's quicker to do it in another way. So I'm just gonna get rid of those clips. And what I'm gonna do is take these clips in the bin and select them. And I'm gonna right click and say, create multi-camera source sequence. So it's gonna take all the clips in the bin and make a multi-camera thingamajig out of them. Obviously the first thing is, how do you sync them up? What this is doing is it's saying, okay, you've got those bunch of clips, how are you gonna sync them? Do you sync them on the start points, the out points, the time code, a marker, or the audio? Audio in particular is a new one. The idea about that is that if you're doing a multi-camera shoot, they've probably all got the same sound, so why not use the sound to line them all up? It's what I tend to do, but I tend to do it manually. This will do it automatically for you. And you use one of those options to line them all up. I haven't put markers on them. I could have actually looked at them and stuck a marker on a particular point on the clips in the first place. I know a lot of people will just set up a flash or something and they'll use that as a place where they can actually sync the clips up. So I would have gone to each clip, found the flash, stuck a marker on it using the M key, and then I could use that. I'd like to try and use the audio on there. A lot of the times it works, sometimes it doesn't. If I try and use the audio on these clips, which are basically five random clips in the bin, it has a go at it and it says, no, couldn't do it, Mush. I couldn't find anything that matches up. That's because these clips are five random clips of Brighton. So quite clearly the sound's not going to match up. But instead I'm gonna go back to it and I'm just gonna say, set it up on the in points. And if it's not right, I can fiddle with it later on. The other stuff down here is fairly obvious. So sequence preset, either choose automatic where it'll work it out based on what the clips are, or you choose a setting yourself. Move them into a bin just means it'll take those clips and then put them in a, a bin inside my project folder to keep it tidy. On the audio side of things, do I use the audio just off of camera one? Do I use the audio from all the cameras or do I switch it? So this one will mix it all together. So if I've got 10 cameras, it'll make a mix of all the audios. This one means that when I switch angles, it switches the audio between the angles. So it goes with whatever audio belongs to the video clip you're looking to. Or this one will use the audio off just the first camera. I like to do that because I like to have one consistent audio track all the way through and just cut the picture. So that's the default, I tend to use that one. The audio channels preset is, yeah, what kind of timeline are you going to make? This sequence preset was choosing the picture, this one I'll be choosing the sound. Again, I can leave it on auto or I could say, no, I'm gonna make a stereo master edit, so I'll put it on stereo. As far as the camera names go, when it pops up in the window and you can look at the different cameras, it will pop up a name as well. And you can say, look, make them up, call them camera one, two, three, and four, use the names that are on the track or use the names that are on the clip. I'm just gonna click okay and let it make me up a multi-camera sequence. So there it is. It's made up that multi-cam sequence. If I double click on it, it actually puts it up into the source. This is a sequence. Normally if you double click on a sequence, it'll open down here in the timeline, but what it does now is it puts it up in the source. And you can have a quick look at it. Tend not to do that, I tend to grab the clips, sync them up, and then do the next bit. And the next bit is to put this sequence inside of another sequence. And the easiest way is simply to select it, right click and say, new sequence from clip. It makes up a new sequence, and that one's inside of it. If I'd gone make new sequence, and then dragged it over, achieves the same job. It's just right click, new sequence from clip, it's quicker. And now I have got a multi-camera edit on the timeline. Right, I actually want to see my multi-camera up here so I can see the different angles and cut between them. In the other versions of Premiere, you'd actually bring up a window by going to window and then multi-camera and it would bring it up. 
It doesn't do that anymore. The multi-camera monitor takes over the program monitor. And the easiest way to get it going is to come to the little wrench where all the settings are and choose multi-camera. Click on that. And now you can see I've got my multi-camera view up there. I'm going to ignore this. I don't use that at all. In fact, it's probably easier if I just whack something else in there so as not to confuse you. Basically, the program monitor will show you all the camera angles and then you can cut between them. And then all you do is you start playing and then start cutting. So I want to cut to this one, that one, cut to the bus, back to the beach, back to the polo. I can use the numeric keypad to do it. Now I'm using the numbers over the top of the keyboard, not on the numeric keypad, but one gets me to camera one, two gets me to camera two, three gets me to camera three. They've all gone black because they've probably run out of stuff. And then once you've done your edit, you click stop and it goes through and puts the cuts in on the timeline. And scrub back over that and you can see I've got here the edits I've actually chosen. And as I go over them, it shows you which camera angle you're using at any particular time. Now, having done the edit, I can tweak it. The best thing to do is come down to the timeline. So suppose I want this to finish at a different point. You just come down here and then grab hold of it and trim. It's definitely an occasion when a rolling edit would be a good thing. So you could just come over here and click on the rolling edit tool and then grab it and start doing a cut between them. I definitely don't want to do any ripple editing because then I might put things out of sync, but a rolling edit's great because I can just change the join between them. I can come to this clip here and then just choose a different angle and it changes the entire angle for that clip. If I want to add an extra cut in here, the simplest thing is select it. I always use the keyboard shortcut to make cuts in clips, which is Control and K, but if you don't know that, it's under Sequence and then Add Edit, which will add and edit exactly where the playhead is. Then come to this one and change the angle on it. So loads and loads of lovely ways you can tweak it. Yep, so I'm happy with that. I can now come back up to the program monitor, click on my little spanner and go back to composite video just to see the edit. There's quite a few new options in there. The basics are pretty much similar, although they've made it faster for you to make the multi-camera sequence. Also the fact that it takes over the program monitor now as opposed to being a different window.